Hi, Vex guys here. Welcome to another episode of Super Hostile Online. Today, we are in the Golden Jungle, and we are going to grind. My supplies have been dropping. They have been skyrocketing downwards since the first couple weeks of Super Hostile Online. Uh, basically, I am on about six or seven... I should have started this episode at my apartment. I am on about six or seven stone axes left in total out of my entire two rows that I used to have, and my stone swords are even starting to slowly go down. I had two rows of pretty much those two items, and then two rows of bows. The bows I get all everywhere. So many bows. Thousands and thousands of bows. I just don't need them. I just don't even pick up bows anymore. But my stone weapons are starting to decrease, so I need to figure something else out. Um, I have a potential solution to that. And it is going to be fishing. Hi, guy. Yeah, so this is the parkour challenge. I should have started recording about two minutes before I did because I came to the Golden Jungle and I was like, hey, parkour. And I jumped up here and I made it on the first try. You know what? Let's go ahead and see if we can get it again. I feel I feel confident. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guy. Uh, I feel bad now. I think I pushed him off. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump down here the normal way. And I'll show you guys how I did it. So there's a little, tr there's some little tricks to parkour. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have a little mini parkour lesson right here. Okay, the start is pretty simple. Obviously, just a couple of normal jumps that I can't even do. Just no, a couple of normal jumps. These signs are actually kind of in the way. This one, look at where I'm standing. There's the ladder is actually that thick, so you don't have to be right up against the wall. You can be out a little bit. That gives you a little bit of room to get just a tiny bit of a jump start. So what I do is right now, I'm as far as I can be away from the wall, okay? That's where I need to go. I'm as far as I can be away from the wall. I back up just a tiny bit, and then I'm holding down control, and I'm barely going to press a W and just jump immediately. Ta-da! It works almost every time for me. And that's because the sprint jump already being activated, the only thing I have to do is line up the jump and jump after I press W. And the time difference between when my middle finger presses W and my thumb presses the space bar is almost negligible, but it makes up for that short distance as I'm walking forward on the ladder. That's a little bit technical for a pretty simple parkour jump, but that's what I do, and it works every time. And then some, this one is just a normal sprint jump. This one you could probably do as a short jump, but I do. I go on the back side and I sprint jump it anyway. And then to the ladder, and now you're at least up to here. That part is pretty easy. Most people don't struggle with that part. This is what people struggle with right here. I'll let this guy go ahead. Take your turn. Okay, I'm going to follow you. Where'd you go? Oh, you're already over there? Okay. Can I, can I have a try? Oh. oh, yay. Thank you. Thank you. So, that was just a sprint jump to the corner. This one is going to be another sprint jump, but I don't want to be all the way on the edge. I want to be a little bit more towards the middle. That way I don't go too far. That's not too difficult of a jump. This next one, I'm aiming for the middle of the ladder right there. And then I'm just going to press shift immediately. See? I pressed shift immediately, and my momentum still continued to carry me forward a little bit. So I stopped moving forward. This right here is the jump that most people have trouble with, because you can't just jump up and across. That corner ladder jump is actually not too difficult, but because this block is here, I can't just jump up and land it. Let's see if I can do this in the first try, but what you essentially need to do here is you need to roll forward, take a tiny jump forward, shift to the right, not press shift, but just change your trajectory to the right a little bit, and then press shift so you stay on the ladder. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, okay, so I almost had it there, actually. I think I was on the ladder for just a second, but I was still pressing forward. So it's not impossible. Let's try it one more time. Oh, if I can even get that far. If this takes me a little while, I might just uh, skip it, because you guys already saw me get to the top. Of course, after you do it once, then it takes forever to do it again. Oh my gosh, I can't even get that past this jump. There we go. You have to jump a little bit towards the side there. Okay. 
There we go. Press shift. Let's try this again. Okay, went too far forward. We'll do it one more try. If I don't get it this time, then we'll call it good. I'm running out of food anyway. Jump shift. And as soon as this guy gets up there. Okay. Let's do... Oh, no, nope, not that way. That wasn't backwards. Forward, shift. And as long as you're pressing shift, as soon as you press shift, you start backing up the ladder rather than going forward. And then this one's just a normal corner ladder jump, and of course I missed it, but you get the point. We're not going to do that over again. You get the point. So the whole thing with this parkour is when you get to the top, you get to take one item. I took the bottle of enchanting. Nothing too valuable was up there anyway. But let's move on. My solution to my low supplies, I've actually come up with a solution for this, and I feel a little bit mixed about it. I think that it's a certainly viable solution. It's definitely going to work. But I also know that Vex does not like the sort of grindy players of SHO. He doesn't like it when people just build little traps and then just attack the little feetsies of the mobs and kill them safely. He doesn't like people doing things safely. So my plan is to go fishing. And if you remember, there is a fishing hole underneath the ground called the grotto over here. Let's kill a couple creatures on the way. But I almost feel that it's necessary at this point. This normal way that I've been attacking... Okay, we're just not going to deal with that. Ooh, okay, we'll just run through here first. Alright, alright, alright. Calm down, mobs, calm down. You're not going to kill me today. I don't want to use this much food to get through here, but I also don't want to take forever doing it either. Okay, so I seem pretty safe so far. Ooh, it looks like this building got reset. I didn't even think about that, the fact that the golden jungle would reset too. It looks so nice though. Look at this. This is a polished andesite, right? Smooth andesite. Yeah, look at that. It looks so nice. And they got the mossy cut. That almost looks like a little mage area. Ooh. I'm wondering, I really hope that he adds the aura magic to the game soon. I know that if you watch Zisto's latest video, he has access to a fireball. I want a fireball spellbook. Let's go ahead and I won't need torches down here. So let's go fishing. Is anybody down here? Hi, guy. No, that'd be mean. <laughs> Alright, let's actually go up on top of this. So let's go fishing. And, yeah, so here's my thoughts, though. Vex does not like the players who are... Well, I shouldn't say he doesn't like the players. He just finds it not the point of Super Hostile Online, of, of Super Hostile in general. It's not really in the spirit of the maps to just be a more passive player. Um, which can present a bit of a dilemma because some people who watch Vex don't watch his videos for Super Hostile Online. And they, they're donating to his Patreon and they, and they want to join the server and all that. But they just have no interest in being a, an aggressive uh, player that goes out and, and, and grinds mobs and kills mobs and attacks dungeons. There are quite a few players that actually don't have that attitude on here. And they just more want to collect resources and, and be builders and build cool things with the limited supplies. Look how long. This is taking a long time to find a fish. I haven't even seen the little bubbles anywhere, have you guys? I haven't even seen the bubbles. This is taking forever today. I wonder if the lag is going to affect my fishing. I haven't gone fishing in a long time. Do I got one? Nope. Is that guy doing better? Where are the fish? Come on, I don't want to take my fishing rod out, because then the timer or whatever will reset. I want to catch at least one fish before I move it. This animation is weird, too, because it's like not even in the water right now. 
So I guess my point that I'm trying to make is that there are a lot of Patreons, Patreons, patrons, I don't know how the proper way to say it, patrons probably, of Vex who are much more into map making and just watching his videos and aren't a part of the super hostile uh, group at all. And I, I think, oh, there we go. There we go. There's a fish. Okay, so this should actually work. This actually looks like it's going to be a viable uh, source of food for a while. So we're going to be fishing for a while. Um, yeah. So I don't think that SHO is really meeting the needs of those players to the best that it could be, I should say. Um, I think that I'm borderline one of those players. Because I really do enjoy the more aggressive parts. I like attacking dungeons. I like killing mobs and, and gearing up and doing all that stuff. But I'm also very much in Minecraft for the, the building aspect. Here we go. There's another one. What do we got? Ooh, salmon. Yeah, I really need to fish more. This is gonna. This is definitely going to help me build back up my supply. Um... I really agree, just late night mod. Oh, FSOs is on right now. Cool. Empress. Empress Pyra. Pyra is a mod now. She's a Reddit mod. So, I don't really have uh, a suggestion to change that. I think that's just the way that... I think that's just the nature of Super Hostile, which is okay, because the whole point of SHO is... It's it's a super hostile map online. It's a multiplayer super hostile. That's the entire point. Ooh, that looked cool. I had two flowers and the sword fished up at the same time. Okay, I definitely need to fish more. This is definitely going to be a good source from now on. And I, but yeah, I don't think that's entirely a problem that super hostile doesn't meet the needs of those people. And again, I like that I'm a little bit of a mix between those two types, like the aggressive super hostile types and the builder types, because this is a good map for that. It's a good map to spend a significant chunk of time grinding and doing dungeon runs and trying to do things faster and better and stronger and with more people and, and gearing up and getting better better armor and better weapons, and there's the whole RPG aspect to it. I'm always nervous that I'm going to miss a fish, that's why I like stop every time one comes. But there's also the aspect of being very, very limited with resources, and I'm very much a fan of that when it comes to creative projects. I, 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 I'm, I don't know if this is like a quote or something, but I've always been taught or I've always been told that creativity isn't about having a sandbox world full of unlimited possibilities like Minecraft. It's more about the limits that you place on your existing game or system or whatever that you're playing or doing. So if you give somebody a piece of paper and a pencil, that limits them to two-dimensional drawings. Like, they can't create literal 3D objects with a pencil and a paper. Oh, hi. Oh, is there a... Oh, you can just jump right in. That's what... Oh, that's what that is up there. You can just jump right in. That's cool. But that's how creativity works, though. If, if you limit somebody's resources, you often get much better quality uh, results. And, and I find that that's true in my life, too. And I think that the fact right now that I have such limited resources in SHO is forcing me to not only be more cautious when I'm building something, so putting more intention into my work and being more in tune with, with what goal or what I'm trying to create, but it also forces you to think about different combinations that you might not have thought of before. I mean, if you're sitting here with your creative inventory open and you have pages and pages and pages and pages of blocks, when I'm, in that, when I'm doing that in creative mode and I'm trying to build something, there's many times where I sit there and I just think, okay, what would look good together? And I can't come up with anything because I'm just looking at all of it and I want all of it to be in there. But when you take a map... Ooh, what I get? Ooh, tripwire hook. That's kind of cool. But if you take a map and 
you only give people certain resources. You only give them red sandstone, andesite, diorite. Oh, uh oh. Uh, you take away the dirt, you take away the cobblestone, you give them very, very basic building blocks, you get these really, really cool structures. And that's what we saw in yesterday's episode when I was trying to show you guys some of those larger plots. There's some smaller plots too that are just as well done, if not better. And that's, you know, it's just because you're limited and you look at things in pairs and you look at combinations of different blocks, I should say, that you wouldn't have thought of before. This very much translates to outside of Minecraft, but Minecraft is just the example right now. I don't really need a bowl. Whatever. Minecraft is just the example right now, but this very much translates into every aspect of life. Um, but with Minecraft, though, I mean, I would have never thought to put, like, red sandstone with, specifically, with polished diorite and polished andesite or something like that. It's just a combination that I probably wouldn't have thought of. I probably would have seen the original source blocks of red sand, andesite, and diorite and tried to use those, or maybe changed one of them, but it just, because there's so many combinations, you sometimes get caught up and, and you miss some things that turn out to look really great or you don't try them. Um, yeah, so maybe try that in a creative world sometime. If, if you are a Minecraft player, which I assume that people watching this video would be, then go in a creative world pick out six random blocks. Here's your challenge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to issue you guys some homework, okay? Here's your, here's your Minecraft challenge for today. We'll go in a creative world, pick out, you know, not even six, pick out five. Pick out five random blocks, okay? That can include stairs, that can inclu include leaves, that can include uh, different, you know, trinkets and things like pressure plates. It, but only choose five different types of items. Five different blocks that can be placed. And build something. And, we'll take it even one step further than that, only give yourself a 20 by 20 area to build it. See what you can do. And pick out the blocks, too, completely randomly, or at least before you have any idea how they're going to look together. Just pick out six random blocks, or five random blocks, I forgot what I said already, but... <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just just pick a small number of blocks. Don't think about how they're going to look together, and just build something. And you might create, you, you might come up with something that you actually really like, or you might think of combining these blocks in a different way that you never thought of before. So that that's my assignment for today. If you choose to accept it, and let me know how that goes for you. Let me know if that works for you. Maybe post uh, post some screenshots to Im Imager if you do that, and and link them in the comments, and I'll take a look through them. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope somebody does it. I hope one of you guys does it, or more, or more than one of you does this challenge. Because I, I guarantee every single person would be different. I guarantee you would pick six different blocks, and every single one would just be different. Or even if a couple of the blocks were the same, you would still end up with different structures, because that's just how creativity works. All right. Well, let's come down now, after that long rant spiel on creativity in Minecraft. Let's come back, bring it back in. Deep breath. We're here, we're fishing, we're relaxing. It's a beautiful night. I'm assuming it's night. I can't see far enough. Oop, almost missed that one. I'm assuming it's night. It's relaxing. Fishing in Minecraft is very relaxing. So, take a deep breath, and we'll just come back together and wind out the episode like this. Let's catch two more items, what do you think they're going to be? I think we'll get just a raw fish and then another bull because they're useless. That's what I think we're going to get. If we get anything at all. There we go. Nope. Salmon. So I was already wrong. Let's see if we can get one more edible here and then I think we'll call it an episode after that. We have some buddies now, too, that are going to join us. I'll probably keep fishing after we go off off screen here after the video ends. By the way, there's some exciting series coming to the channel that you don't want to miss. That's all I'm going to say for now. That would have been the perfect time to end the video if I had caught a fish. But instead, I'm here talking on awkwardly into the night. But that's okay. One more fish. That's all I want. What did I get? Puffer fish. Of course it's a puffer fish. I don't think I even got it. Alright. Can I even pick it up?
Come on, get in my inventory. Where are you? Where'd you go? What? The mysterious pufferfish. <laughs> I'm gonna name that. I'm gonna name the video that, and you guys are gonna watch the whole episode and not find out till the last ten seconds of the video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.